Welcome to DCTP from the Chaos Communication Congress, uh, the yearly annual congress of the Chaos uh, Computer Club in, uh, in Hamburg. Uh, my name is Philip Banze and uh, my next guest is Stephen Balaban. Welcome to the program, Stephen. Um, there was a lot of talk about Google Glass and, and wearable computing. You're a developer, a hacker, and you have your own company called Lambda Head. And uh, yeah, you develop and, and sell a similar product like Google Glass. Just before we start about what we talk about, what you did with Google Glass, just explain what Google Glass is and how it works and how it looks like for those who don't know. Yeah, so, um, you know, what Google Glass is, is a um, basically a wearable just computer. Just put it on and then. then yeah, sure. Um, it's a wearable computer that uh, allows you to do things like take pictures, you can. Um, uh, you can record video with it. You can, um, you know, kind of send emails, dictate te text messages, receive tweets. It's kind of a ba both a combination of a notification platform as well as a um, image and video recording device. Uh, the the reality is that Google Glass runs Android, and at at its core is basically. Um, an Android phone on your face. So you have uh, you have an Android phone in your in your pocket, and the the glass communicates with the Android phone. Um. So so Google Glass can communicate through Bluetooth uh -huh. and Wi-Fi to either an iPhone or an Android device, but um, it also basically, um, you know, is its own Android device in itself. So okay. Google Glass runs Android 4.0. It um, has a system on a chip. It's its own processor. It's got its own Wi-Fi chip. It's it's even got you know um, a graphics card and, and flash memory and all. But that if you want to have internet access, you have to pair it with an, with it with a smartphone. At the moment, to get internet access, you can either pair it with a smartphone or Google Glass will correct co connect directly to Wi-Fi. Ah, okay. Without your phone. So what do you see in the in the in the display area yeah, there? Yeah. So um, you know. And I, what what I see when when I have uh, Google Glass on is like you know for example, um, I'll have a um, you know a home screen, um, a take a picture of me. Yeah, sure. Here we go. There, I just so I just took a picture with of you. I, I just see you sitting there. It, when I click this button up here, you you hear a, a little ding. Yeah. And uh, now I can see a picture of you come up on the screen, which is what I'm looking at and right now. And can you do it by voice control? Um, you can say, okay, Glass, take a picture, and it'll take a picture. I think you, you for, you first you've got to basically um, enable it. Uh, I'm actually, it's actually having some, some issues right now in terms of uh, it was just going through an update <laughs> sequence because um, I, I hadn't turned it on until <laughs> uh, recently. But um, basically, you, you can also do voice commands. You can say things like, OK, Glass, take a picture. OK, Glass, record a video. And um, that's the f basic functionality of this device. Uh, how do I notice if you take a picture of me? Um, so what, what you just saw there was that when I took the picture, you see how the screen lights up here? I don't know if, if that's, that's visible. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it's if you, you look know, on this camera. You should be able to see yeah. here that, that that screen is lit up. Yeah. It's that's it's the it's indication. The um, if I, and ah. if I hold this down again. Now I'm recording a video. You should also see. Um, I see it. You see the kind of a little bit of a bright light that's coming from the screen here. It should. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I see a, a small, small display. Right. That, exactly. That, uh, it changes. It's not a. It's not a. It's a not a steady light. Yeah. Right. It's not a red recording light. So and then when it when it's when it's no longer on anymore, you, you that's basically when you know it's not recording. Ah. Okay. Um. But so that's basically the only notification that you have that the device is, is potentially recording. recording. And um, can you switch it off? So um, by default, y whenever it's recording, every piece of software that Google's written for the device, when it's recording, the screen is on full brightness. Um, however, you can do things by rooting the device and um, do, you know, working with the low-level power management API to turn the screen off while it's recording. So that's basically what I was doing with, with, with this device um, was, you know, I turned the screen off and part of that was for battery power, you know, f to decrease the consumption of the battery to, so that I could record for longer. But the other part of that was um, basically just showing that, look, 
you can set this device up so that it's recording and nobody except for you know, knows about it. What are the privacy implications? Well, you know, well, some people bring up the point, wow, this seems like somebody could wear this and really violate my privacy while I'm on the street. I think that there's, there's two perspectives to that. One is there's the privacy implication for the people that I would be looking at on the street. But really, the, the more important thing, I think, is the privacy implication for me because it's actually violating my privacy a lot more than it's violating somebody else on the street's privacy. And I'll, that? I'll, I'll show yeah. you how that is. For example, when you go to a store to buy something and use a credit card, okay, if I'm wearing Google Glass and let's say somebody's um, executed a some kind of exploit on my device and has set it up so that it records without my knowledge and the screen doesn't go on, I what do I do? I take my, my credit card out, I look at my card, I, I swipe it, and guess what? I just took a picture of my credit card. You know, I go to a bank ATM if it's recording video, I put in my PIN, right? So I'm actually leaking a lot of information, whereas if you're just walking on the street, sure, it is definitely... Um, potentially you could argue a violation of your privacy but i think one of the things to really worry about is you know you, you really want to know when this is recording you if you're wearing the device but don't you notice it wearing the device that it records no so so y you could potentially set it up where it is on but in the background another process ah. is running and is doing recording so and you looking through the display don't see that anything is recorded. So that's that's totally possible to set up, yes. Okay. And um, another thing is face recognition. Google said, well, it's obviously possible, but we don't do it. Yeah, so what Google said is um, uh, they've changed their terms of service such that um, any what's called quote-unquote glassware, which is um, uh, any piece of software that's for Google Glass using what's called their Mirror API, um, is not allowed to have facial recognition and they wouldn't approve it to be you know, installed on other people's glass devices, which is basically the same thing as Apple. You know, if Apple was to say, okay, we're not going to allow this in the App Store. Is, um, it a, is, is this a, a, um, a method that works to prevent this kind of facial recognition? Um, I think that it, it, it works in, um, in an economic sense. That is to say, uh, it, 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 it disincentivizes individuals to, to write such applications uh, for, for commercial gain because basically what Google has said is that they're going to cut off a major distribution channel for your software. However, from a real perspective of if somebody wants to write this themselves, it's actually quite easy. You can, you can just simply write a normal Android application and run it directly on the device and Google really doesn't have any control over it from that perspective. And did you do it? Yeah, so that's exactly what that that that's what we've done. And what did you find out? I mean, what um, did you learn? Well, I mean, there's a few things we uh, you know, we learned a lot about the low-level power management APIs for Android itself. Um, we learned a lot about how uh, um, well, you know, honestly, one of the things that we really learned when when we were when when I I, I kind of wore both Google Glass as well as wore Lambda hat for for a few months rec trying to record as much as I could. I learned that the amount of data that you can gather about yourself by just taking a picture every few seconds is really astounding and, and a little bit frightening. So what did you do exactly? You set it up that way that it takes pictures every how many seconds? Yeah, so um, it's a variable that's in the code. It's some constant and you can change it. But um, I in general, I would set it up to take a picture every four seconds. So click one, two, three, four, snap, two, three, four. And... Um, basically, you know, would just take that, build up that picture stream. And it was a very, you know, these are very high resolution images, five megapixel images that we're taking, and then would uh, do some post-processing with that data. For example, pulling out faces. Um, there's some kind of, in, in the talk, I presented some kind of more crazy ideas like pulling out license plates. Um, there's a bunch of different applications that you can do with this kind of massive amount of data that you have from taking a picture every four seconds. I mean, the privacy implications you mentioned are pretty obvious. Is it useful? Um, so, so one of the useful things that, that we're still building, but you, know, you could imagine being really useful, would be uh, basically a search for your life. So um, you'd like to search, oh, you know, uh, show me a list of the people that I met uh, between December 25th and December 30th in Hamburg, Germany. 
and you know being able to pull out the faces of all the people that you've had a face-to-face conversation with as well as potentially the the conversations that you have with those people i think that would be an extremely useful application and um you know while right now it's kind of more in the research part of like exploring what data can we gather what can we do with this data i think that the always on wearable computer is going to be a very useful device in, in the next few years and did, did you ex- exactly do it i mean you obviously took pictures every four seconds did you uh, took uh, did you take out the, the faces and 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 run it through uh, a database yeah so so in in addition to just logging the data we also did post processing mm-hmm. where we we ran it through a facial detection pipeline where we would simply pull out the faces and uh, you know basically every single frame there we would do a normal facial detection algorithm it's only detection by that face you don't know the names or anything so so uh, first first you do the the detection pipeline then you then what we also have done is a, a basic clustering pipeline so this is not recognition clustering just means that um, you're basically Uh, plotting these out in some high dimensional space and seeing where they coalesce. So you would imagine, a f- you know, all of your pictures would be very close to each other. All of my, for example, my, my co-founders pictures would be close to it, to each other. And so we did run some clustering algorithms over that data. Um, and we also have another application that actually does recognition with a database where we did get, we gathered data, we cl- we tagged that data, and then we trained a facial recognition algorithm And then the images from the device were checked against that database. So we have implemented both of those things. There, I think there are two, appro- two, two, two ways to approach it. Uh, like you can do this kind of stuff on Google servers and you can do this kind of stuff on your glass or on your local machine. Does it make a difference? I think it makes a huge difference. Um, uh, I would not personally trust... Um, Any any service to to with for example pictures of my credit cards, pictures of my me put typing in my password to my computer, pictures of me putting my pin, pictures of my text messages. Um, now obviously you know for example with most of your text messages you know that's you know being managed by a third party. But uh, I, I personally and and have explicitly not automatically uploaded any of the images that we've taken u- using both glass and lambda hat uh, because i just don't think it's it's a very secure thing to do and uh, how is lambda hat any different from google glass um i think th- so the the big difference is sheer battery life um lambda hat has basically allows you to record from let's say the moment you wake up 9 a.m to well past it's 9 a hat PM. it's a hat with a camera it, it's a hat with a camera um, it does not have a display, um, so it's not. It, Google Glass does have a display. Um, there's there's trade-offs there. I, I personally, when I wore Google Glass when I first got it for a, a month straight, I found myself using it for two things: uh, recording pictures and telling the time. Um, and taking pictures and video and telling the time were the two use cases. Uh, only one of those requires a screen, and I and I already use my cell phone to tell the time. So. Um, basically, we cut off the display and drastically increased the battery. And um, man, more and more wearables will come to market yes. like this. More and more, and th- th- there's no way around it. Um, what, what do you see coming? Where is it going? Yeah, I, I think that um, you're going to start to see a lot more what I refer to as always on devices. So whether that's Lambda Hat, which is an always on video recorder, you know, let's be clear here, Google Glass as it's designed is not an always on device. It's meant to be intermittently on. If you run the software that we we normally ran on it to take a picture every four seconds, this lasts about an hour and a half. So that's not a very long period of time, whereas Lambda Hat lasts for about 12 to 16 hours. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically an entire- And, But day. Lambda Hat stores the- Photos where locally? Locally on Lambda Hat. It, it's a full-blown Android computer. And it's meant to stay there or to do... It, it's meant to stay there and on your local machine. Okay. So either, can you know, that's that's where it's me- it's meant to be analyzed by you, you, you locally, not uploaded to Google or Facebook necessarily, and maybe only the things that you want to... 
to upload. What do you think? How should we deal with this massive amount of data that is collected by these uh, wearable devices? Um, I think that we should just be very cognizant that we're collecting the data, that this data contains sensitive information, that um, it is useful. And I mean, I, I think we're, we're going towards a world where you're going to be recording a lot more about yourself. You're going to be able to do some really amazing things, whether that's um, facial recognition or remembering basically every conversation that you've ever had. And like, you know, it, you know, five years later, we'll be able to look back to now and say, wow, I remember, I remember having this conversation. And um, so there's some really useful things, but we just have to be careful about um, where we put that data. And do you think it will be possible to store it all locally and control everything? Or is it just the way it goes that we all upload to, to, the, to the cloud and Google and Facebook control everything? So I think that Google and Facebook would like to um, have you think that uh, only they're capable of, of, of managing and processing your data. But the reality is, is that um, with with kind of with, with some of these new things, like for example, general purpose GPU computing, uh, you have a lot of processing power even on your normal laptop computer uh, with, with if, you, if you bring in kind of GPUs to, to help out with the, the CPU. And um, not to mention your phone itself is actually quite a powerful computer. Um, and, and so I really do think that things are going to become more local in addition to the fact that if you just graph a uh, hard drive uh, cost, per, cost per gigabyte, it's just it's this exponentially declining numbers. So I really do think that we're going to start seeing more uh, distributed data as well as processing. And do you think this will calm down those privacy activists that say, well, we, we, we don't want to get recorded all the time? And uh, no, no, it's stored locally and it's always my data and it stays on my computer and I run the facial recognition algorithms. It's not Google, it's not Facebook, it's me. Do you think it ma it'll make any difference? Um, I think I think that it does make a difference. Now, I, I think that it's a little bit hard to stop this kind of inevitable forward march of technology. And, um, you know, uh, in the same way that back in the, 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 the late 1800s and early 1900s, we, st we saw the rise of instant cameras. And there was a lot of, you know, kind of controversy about the privacy implications of being able to capture a photo at all. Um, and, you know, we survived and, and we kind of moved on and, and, and the world didn't come to an end. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, will, will it satisfy them? I don't know. Maybe some people. But I think the other thing to keep in mind is that when you talk about all this technology, you're really talking about the fact that you, you have this technology that used to be in the hands of governments mm -hmm. and large institutions like corporations and, uh, you know, corporations and, and states. And you're starting to see it brought back into the hands of the average person. And I think that in, in some ways it's actually very empowering for the average person. And, and, and I, I in, think, in which way? Yeah. In which way? I mean, one, one thing you mentioned for yourself, you're recording your day, you can uh, easily remember people who you talk to and the conversations, uh, you can uh, 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 get them at hand uh, you had. What, uh, what, what else? Where is the empowerment? Well, so um, I, I think that one of the one of the big things, and so a lot of the people who have been working in, in the wearable computing space for a while, for example, Steve Mann, uh, he coined a term called surveillance. And surveillance is the the idea that instead of surveillance, which is basically a, an authority or a power managing a CCTV or a facial recognition system or a license plate reader, um, you know, uh, surveillance is everybody recording things and, and kind of a more radical transparency and uh, bringing those technologies down to the individual level and, you know, allowing the individual to enforce transparency and enforce um, basically uh, make, making both states and corporations um, responsible for their actions. So, I, I mean, I think it's empowering in that respect. Okay. Stephen, thanks very much for coming. Yeah. Uh, do you have a YouTube channel? Um, yeah, so we, we have a YouTube channel, which is Lambda Labs, uh, right on YouTube. And uh, we also have a Twitter, Lambda Hat, at Lambda Hat. All right, check it out. Thanks very much for watching. Um, this is DCTP. My name is Philip Banza. And check out our YouTube channel at dctp.tv. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned.